welcome to another great episode of the nonprofit show. And we titled it, How'd you do that? Ending the end of year with a 374% increase. Yeah. Our friend, the guru of all gurus, yes, push up those glasses, Jared R. Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group. And before we get into that, we've got a little bit of housekeeping. Again, I'm Julia Patrick here with my co-host. I love when I get to interview you because um, it's always amazing and I get to learn things, but this is a really cool thing that we're going to talk about today. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm really excited. And you know, we have partners that join us on this journey and I bet some of these partners were involved in this process. Um, and so we want to say our gratitude to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, your part-time controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd herself, of course, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. If you want to share this amazing episode or get back to any of the other 900 plus episodes, you can simply do, do that by joining us on our app. Oh, and it matches today. It does. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting so old. I had to get the red case so I can see it in the depths of my black handbag. Well, look at mine. It is bright pink, but it's, it, it's right along with my logo, right? I was so, going to say, it should. It should be there. Brand. Um, streaming broadcast podcasts. We are wherever you are. And um, my favorite is if you go to, and I have done this, if you're in your family room or living room watching TV and you have a smart speaker, you can actually say the nonprofit show and it'll come up. It's a little kooky, but super fun. So we will meet you where you are and where you need to be. Jared R. Ransom, nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. I love this image of you. Is this taken in your office? My home, yes. So I had a photo shoot. I was recognized as uh, a woman to know in my community, which included a photo shoot. And um, what you can't see in this photo it, intentionally behind me were hats because it's, it spoke to all the hats, right. Mm -hmm. That we wear in, in the nonprofit sector. Awesome. That's super, super cool. Well, I love this image of you and uh, you've never taken a bad picture, but I just think this is great. Thanks. So let's get into it because this is a really this is a chock -a block full conversation. Yeah. First off, talk about the end of year process. Like before we get into who the comment, who the, the person was, yeah. talk about, or tell me, explain to me end of year, what that looks like, not just for this client of yours, mm -hmm. but just in general, what are we looking at? Yeah. So end of year, we're talking calendar year is okay. very critical for the nonprofit community. I like to say, Julia, we have trained our society that that is the giving season. Yeah. October is when it starts. November is when it ramp ramps up and December is when it accelerates. Mm -hmm. So that October, November, December calendar year Q4 is so critical now for many nonprofits that is simply midway through their fiscal right so we're doing this huge push because it is when the majority of you know givers have been trained to give however yeah. it's really mid year of you know most organizations that have that July 1 fiscal mm -hmm. so it's critical um statistics have shown really like 30% of fundraising dollars come in in those three months. And mm -hmm. so the majority also being in December. So I led a campaign that was remarkable, extremely successful, and mm -hmm. I am spilling the beans right here, right now. Now I will say too, for those of you that might already follow me on LinkedIn, I have shared a lot of this. So we're just diving deeper into the conversation. So talk to us about the organization and I don't I don't want you to necessarily divulge the name but yeah. could you paint a picture of who they are and what they are yeah so that we can understand how you integrated this into like a multi-channel push so I think what's really important is to know that this organization received notification in August of a looming funding cut September was when that cut happened of over $400,000, okay? And their smaller organization, no more than a million. So losing over 400,000 is 
Mm. hemorrhage. I mean, it is a hemorrhage, right? Mm, <laughs> and so looking yeah. at this from a standpoint, not human services, not basic needs. So their, their focus is really more uh, wellness. So mental health and wellness. And so really looking at this from a separate lens, because it's not saying we need basic food, clothing, and shelter, which I've got to say, Julia, is where the majority of my career fundraising has been focused. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing to think about the, the fright and the stress that a cut like that puts on an organization, it must like just yank back the chain on any creative thinking and innovation because you're just working from pure fear at that point, right? You are, and you're, you know, you're sharing with the funders that that this funding loss has happened. You're sharing with the staff. There might be fear amongst the staff. Am I safe? Am I going to lose my position? Uh, what does that look like? So I was, you know, committed to raising the bar higher than I've ever raised. I set a goal of raising $200,000 in 90 days, mm -hmm. fell shy of that, raised 177,000. So just shy of 200,000. And I was waiting for that angel donor to say, here's the rest, like, here's the rest of that gap. Yeah, you know? Let's get you over the hump. Yeah, <laughs> didn't yeah. happen, but that's okay. So really looking at this from the foundational standpoint that we have here is an integrated and multi-channel marketing. So, you know, everything is better when you're communicating with your audience on all of the platforms. And I'm going to share all of that here. So my go-to is always email communication. Yeah. And then how do you repurpose that into, you know, so many other platforms, social media, additional emails. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many ways to really integrate this. I'm going to talk about an end of year appeal. So a mail solicitation that was sent, all kinds of things. So essentially we took one message and we scattered it among mm -hmm. all the ways and we're consistent and consistent and consistent because that's where I find whether you're wanting to gain muscle and lose weight, mm -hmm. <laughs> consistency is key also mm -hmm. into gaining donors and increasing your revenue. So, so and I love that because in other words, you did the heavy lifting up front. You really branded that strong identity. I've got so many questions about this. Yeah, bring them. <laughs> you made it consistent. Did you share with the community that you had a looming budget cut? Absolutely. Yes. You did. We did. Yeah, oh. we were very transparent that oh. we lost over four hundred thousand okay. dollars, um, and where that funding cut came from. Okay, and then how that would negatively impact and has already negatively impact uh, impacted the programming, right? So X amount of children, X amount of classrooms, X amount of schools mm. will no longer receive our service. And we really had to change, you know, how we were doing programming, how we are, were just all of it, everything had to be reassessed. So really looking at this from uh, transparency and you know me, Julia. So for me, authenticity is key and transparency is key. So we absolutely did share that we had a immense funding loss. Yeah. Wow. I'm really, I'm so glad I asked that question. <laughs> Because I, I don't know what I would do. And that's, you know, I mean, I, I really, I'm, I'm going to have to think about this. I'm going to have to really, really think about this. So talk about, you started this appeal when, and then when did you finish it? And tell us how many hits you, how many pushes you made. Yeah. Touch, touch. So I counted end of year, starting October 1 and ending December 31st. And okay. We are an organization that our fiscal is July 1, right? So that, right. again, this is a mid-year push, but <clears throat> calendar end of year. Right. And so we, you know, really started in October. We had an in-person event early in October, okay. which brought in some opportunity for new donors, you know, to really cultivate and steward those, those individuals that did come. Mm -hmm. um, over the course of the 90 days, 11 emails were sent out. Now, not all to one demographic. We did seg um, segment the that mm -hmm. list and really figure out, okay, where are my lie bunts? And you've heard on this show before, yeah. Yeah. lie bunts is one of our favorites. So that's uh, an acronym for last year, but unfortunately not this. Because to me, Julia, 
those are our lowest hanging fruit. Yes. You don't even need a ladder to pick that fruit, right? No, like it is no right you're there, right. Right there in front of you. It, it is tangible. So reaching out to that list, we also looked at our Cybunts, which is some mm-hmm. year, but unfortunately not this. Mm-hmm. And then also $0 donors. And so Giving Tuesday fell within that 90-day block. Mm-hmm. And one of the campaign outreaches for the non-donors was simply to give us five dollars, and yes. the point of that was to get them to make a donation, a right. financial donation, because then we get to steward them, cultivate that relationship in a little different manner than we have yeah. previously. I love it. It's it's like you've you've paid somebody to become a, a warm lead. Yeah, one hundred percent. So one thing I'll share with the consistent branding and imaging, uh, we were consistent with sharing about the funding loss. We were consistent about sharing our $200,000 goal. We were consistent in bringing updates to that goal, right? We're currently at 12%. We're currently at 14% showing progress bar. The other thing I did, and this was, I want to say new to me, Julia, because Uh I get bored easily with seeing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I used the same photo of the same young woman, young girl, a student on everything, on emails, on social media, on the, the solicitation. It was the same photo, right? So, so someone could say, oh, I've seen this before, but the recollection is what I was looking for. Awesome. And you know what? I mean, you know, I've been in marketing and publishing for yeah. the, all my life, more than 30 years of my professional life. And this is the hardest thing for people to understand because we get bored. We assume yep. that things have, you know, like everybody else is going to be bored because we're working with these images, but you have to remember people see it like that. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you've got to keep you reinforcing. Good job. That uh, That's like, okay, the show's over. Cause that's like and my I, happy point. I did get tired of seeing the same photo and I was so <laughs> tempted to change it. And I didn't. Now Good I job. might've added another image, mm-hmm. right? Like on the mail solicitation, but mm-hmm. the main image of this young girl that we used stayed prominent and stayed as the number one primary image. Okay. You are rocking it. You are doing so well. I'm so, so thrilled to hear this and proud of you. Now, when you talk about amplifying your outreach, I mean, I would, it's fair to say that the year prior, Hmm. 11 touches had not been orchestrated. No. And that was just email. So 11 email touches, right? Not to mention social media. And so when we increased our marketing and communications, we increased it across the board. Mm -hmm. And the easiest place to increase this, I'm going to say is social media. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can repurpose a lot of content using AI, artificial intelligence, chat GPT is always my best, you know, friend, Mm -hmm. but really sharing, you know, we talk a lot about when you ask when you ask for support, you want to ask, think, thank them, report to them and repeat, ask, mm-hmm. think, report, repeat. And mm-hmm. you do the same cycle. So a lot of social media posts, right. And again, using the same image for giving Tuesday as we did for the holiday appeal and things like that. Mm-hmm. So social media through the roof and my number one channels always linked in and, and a lot of nonprofits do not leverage LinkedIn right. to its capacity. Yeah. Um, huge corporate opportunities there, mm-hmm. huge individuals, right, that we can mm-hmm. engage with them, either from a board perspective, a volunteer perspective, an individual perspective. Mm-hmm. So do not miss LinkedIn. And then the meta universe, right, where we use Facebook and Instagram, and those are often linked together. Absolutely. They you're are posting one, you're posting the other posting on the other. Yeah. yeah. So those three platforms. I love it. And again, you still stuck with the same imagery, the same color scoping. Did you change the color scoping? No, you know, what's interesting, Julia. So we've decided as an agency to remove one of our brand colors. We decided that it was too harsh. It was too bold. It was just no longer resonating with the vibe of, of the, the organization, especially when it comes to wellness. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't want to have anything that's going to be too stark. And you just think, Oh, that doesn't, that doesn't feel good. Too aggressive. Too aggressive. 
too aggressive. So we removed a color from our color wheel um, and stayed consistent with our with our primary colors, right? So the, the colors did not change. We didn't mm -hmm. even go to holiday colors, right? Okay, that was my ne that was why I <laughs> asked that question. I that thought was my you might. Yeah, be well, because you know, you see a lot of organizations that really amp up. Yes. you know, the Christian holidays, which I think is a big mistake because then it leaves off other, you know, other faith constructs and makes it look like it's only a Christian ask. 100%. And this organization oh. is very inclusive of all people and of all, you know, essentially thoughts and beliefs. So to mm -hmm. us, that was very important. Now, mm -hmm. if your mission obviously is faith-based, yeah. And mm -hmm. let's say you have a huge Catholic following, you mm -hmm. want to speak to your audience. Mm -hmm. So we were speaking to our audience, right? By really opening it up and keeping it non-denominational, non-faith centric, you know, so mm -hmm. we stuck to our colors and our colors only. Oh my God. And think of the money and time and effort that you saved. I mean, don't you feel like this is just going to like make future campaigns so much easier to even just consider because you'll be like, yes. we can do this. Yes. We do this. 100%. The other thing I'll share, and I know we're not done, but I mapped all of this out in September, right? Launched in October. And then everything we did, I tracked its success on this plan so we can rinse and repeat for mm -hmm. next or this, <laughs> this end of year. Right. You right. know, and, and to make those tiny adjustments, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we send an email earlier, maybe we segment the list further, but this way we can track, because the one thing I know to be true, true, Julia, in my 20 plus years of consulting, too many organizations do not track. And so we're right. throwing spaghetti, we're throwing spank, um, paint. We're throwing everything on the wall and hoping that it works, right? We're using the prey method. We really right. hope this right. works right. Yeah. and we don't know. Well, and also I think what happens is that, um, and I don't want to get too far off. I want to get back, I get onto this next topic of the personal touch, but I think a lot of times we believe that something has impacted a certain way and it's just our own emotions are or feeling it's not a data point that yeah. we can follow right and so I think that's where we make a lot of mistakes where we continue to make these mistakes before we move on I want to get into this a little bit more the personal touch the gratitude video the personal email holiday cards talk about how you wove some of that in because that's kind of a heavy lift for most organizations so we were very particular with the videos. Um, and in this instance, the founder is still very much involved with the agency. And so they did some gratitude videos and I provided a, a very short snippet, a very like small script. Here's what I'd like for you to say to this person. They absolutely did that. We branded behind us, right? So we used a branded um, Zoom background, if you will. <laughs> so like everything, a repeat, like a step, step and repeat, repeat very okay. similar. Yes. And so we made sure that, you know, um, reflected all of our branding, our messaging, every, like everything just looked the same. Um, and I have to say, Julia, it didn't cost a lot of money, right? Like I use tools that are free to the nonprofit community. I'm not a graphics person. Um, I am someone who, you know, loves, loves a plan, loves consistency and really loves to see success. <laughs> I love it. I think it's just fascinating. Um, okay. So talk Let's go to the, about yeah, the video, right? So we did the yeah. video. And then we did some personal emails. And so um, I was I was reaching out to some of our donors, some of our supporters to say, you know, your contributions over the last X amount of time. Some of them I did a year. Some of them I did since they've been involved okay. um, and really helped to demonstrate what their dollars have done for the organization and put it into tangible. So, for instance, you know, um, for, for those of you watching and listening, perhaps $25, you know, feeds a family for right. a month. That is how I essentially set up the, the language. Exactly. I reached mm -hmm. out to some of these donors and I said, you know, your donation of X amount mm -hmm. over the year has helped to feed X amount of families for X amount of time. Um, something like that. Right. And then we did the holiday cards 
And again, same branding, same coloring for mm -hmm. our um, cards. Mm -hmm. And then we put a personal note on there. So every mm -hmm. single card had a handwritten note. And we have gotten so much, comp so many compliments uh -huh. around that. So it was nice. I love it. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a kooky question, but when did you send those holiday cards out? Do you remember? Yeah, it was right after Thanksgiving. So okay, early, early December. So they okay. landed early December. Great. Okay, great. Because I yeah. think that's another thing. Yeah. Not to mention it went on the heels of a solicitation. Mm -hmm. So it also, you know, back to back, you know, November was the solicitation and December was the holiday card. Now sneak peek, I will tell you the next mailer we have planned is Valentine's and mm -hmm. it is, yes, it will land uh, mid February. Mm -hmm. It is a heart shaped postcard mm -hmm. and we're selling it or sending it rather to the majority of those supporters. Mm -hmm. It is not an ask. It is purely a uh, gratitude piece, mm -hmm. zero solicitation, just mm -hmm. a, a heartfelt message. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think again, we, we lose track. We think if we we're communicating an ask and ask and ask, and, and I think you've got to be doing these gratitude pieces because yeah. in essence that becomes an ask. It does. Yeah. I mean, you know, you You've got to fit in phone calls. So whether it's a personal email, a phone call, I engaged the board. There was a handful of board members that said, I'll make some phone calls. Yeah, yeah. And all they were doing, because I mentioned the party in October, mm -hmm. they simply called and said, thank you for attending the party. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming. It was mm -hmm. great to have you there. Great to meet you. And you know what? This is a, a national board. So not all board members were present. Mm -hmm. So even some board members that weren't at the party still made thank you calls to say, thank you for attending. Thank you for being there. Yeah. So it was all hands on deck team sport. Um, it was a lot of fun. And again, like really seeing that success. So last year, just under $40,000 was raised for this agency's end of year campaign mm -hmm. this year, just under 200,000. So that's the 374% increase. Amazing. Okay. So we all know you're a rock star. I mean, I see it. I live it with you. It's 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 just crazy good stuff. You are are you are superb at being strategic and inclusive and positive. Thank you. I'm going to go a little bit to the dark side and say what even though you have all this amazing success, mm -hmm. what would you have changed or what will you change for next year as you navigate this again? Yeah. So we really cut corners when it came to cost, right? So I mentioned, I did a lot of it myself. I used the tools that were free tools like Canva, you know, to help design. Um, we were printing, you know, I went to like an office Mac staples, printed, folded, stuffed, mm -hmm. stamped, Next year, I hope that we have money, you know, in, in the coffer, so to speak, so that all of this can really be um, integrated into a professional, a more professional uh, distribution, right? And so it took a lot of time and energy because mm -hmm. we didn't have the money. And so I was determined to make this as cost efficient as possible, which I love, Julia, because well, this, speaks, this speaks to the potential. It doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. It really doesn't. Yeah. When you look at your time frame and understanding, I mean, this sounds to me like you didn't have much time to pull this together. I mean, no. I see this, <laughs> most of this work, I see the plans being finished by July 31st. Right. For most right. organizations. So talk to me about this in terms of, you know, when things went out and how they went out, um, we're going to be in a general election this this time right. next year. We will have been finishing up a general election, I should say, moving into the inaugural season. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people in the nonprofit sector are really freaking out about that because they think there's yeah. going to be a diversion of funds and attention. Do you see yourselves changing because of that? You know, I think so. The difference is, and, and I, I know this, right? Like when it is a campaign season, I do alter ever so slightly. However, those that give to political campaigns, 
They give because they, be I believe, they believe so strongly in, you know, whatever the campaign is that this individual, you know, is, is lobbying for, right? Espousing. But they're not charitable deductions. Anything given to a political campaign is not a charitable deduction. And so we, the nonprofit community, still has that, right? So I think when we wave the flag of a tax a tax deduction, this is a charitable deduction, right? And many states, they have the tax credits. Arizona is one of those. So you're still going to have supporters that give to the tax credit because they need to for their tax benefit, right? right, right. So I think just ever so slightly, if we change our language and, um, you know, know our donors and our, our, our constituency base mm -hmm. and to speak to that point, I think is really important. Okay. One last question. And, and this is, speaks to the whole uh, continuity and consistency. Would you use the same graphics and color and promotional direction, art direction for that next, for the next year? Well, I get, it will be this year, but you know, uh, in, in 11 months, 10 months. 100%. One, 100%. So okay. I, I will use the same girl, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. But I, I, uh, yeah. All of that. Yeah, I, I will find an image uh -huh. and use that same image, right? Okay. Because I do believe that that contributed to the success because the recall yes. of that uh, really elevated over the 90 days. Whereas I think if we change and change and change, even though we might get bored of seeing it because we touch it and see it yeah. all the time, our audience is also getting peppered, you know, from so many different angles, because during this 90 days, Julia, I was solicited also from multiple agencies, oh, right? Oh. And so really looking at it to say, okay, what, like, what is staying the same? Because to me, that cut through the noise because it yeah. was so consistent. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a reason why we call you the nonprofit nerd. Yes. I'm going to push <laughs> my glasses for our podcast listeners. Jared yeah. and I are both wearing glasses today and we just push them up with our imaginary tape above the bridge of our nose. That's hey, right. Jared R. Ransom, nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group, also the co-host of the nonprofit show, which is like an amazing thing. I mean, not only do you look good, you sound good, but you do good. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. You know, it was a, it was a heavy lift. It was intimidating. I set the goal at, I set the goal at 200,000, knowing that was quite lofty and very pleased with the results. I'm so excited. Now we want you to come back in 10 months and probably let us in on what the plan is. Maybe we'll have you come back in like August or September and talk about this if, if you're okay with that. I'm just throwing this on you, but I think it would be really cool to say, okay, what does the plan look like? You right. Know? And yeah. how how do we navigate that? Because this has just been super, super cool. And um, yeah. you know, sometimes consultants aren't really um they're they're not excited about sharing this because it's somewhat right. in, insider information. So I well, say thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's it's kind of the recipe, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to find our special ingredient to yeah. that recipe. And so oh, I do yeah. encourage all of you, you know, go to my LinkedIn page. I also shared this in an article uh, format. So you can see that there. And it talks about the 11 emails, the 26 new donors, the increase by 100% from one donor. So it's all in there. I want to give and be of service. So an honor. Thank you, Julia, for putting and, me in the hot seat to share this. Oh, oh my gosh. It's been fabulous. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, Jarrett Ransom, my co-host, but today in the hot seat, um, actually as a guest. So uh, CEO of the Raven Group. Again, we have amazing partners that, that don't script us and that really give us the freedom to have these conversations they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd Herself, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Wow, I'm super energized. I love starting the week this way. Um, we're going to get you back on because now we've seen how it finished up. I want to see how we kick it in and how we get it started. So yeah, 
I mean, you know where I'll be, Julia. I'll be right here. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm putting you on, no, but but I'm putting you on the booking calendar. Go ahead. That's in that great. spreadsheet, sister. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, my friend. Hey, everybody. As we end every day, we like to remind ourselves and our viewers and our listeners. What, Jarrett? To stay well so you can do well. Thanks, Julia. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.